let me ask you a question. Would you paint your house with lead paint? Would you fill your car with lead gasoline? Well, you can't do either of those because those products have been banned. Why? Because of lead. According to the Mayo Clinic, signs and symptoms of lead poisoning consist of stomach upset, constipation, infertility, tingling in the hands and feet, and memory loss. The brain is an organ most sensitive to lead poisoning. And in some cases, the lead poisoning is so severe, it causes death. Thankfully, we have sportsmen that help balance the environment. They keep the animal population in control, which in turn helps plant life thrive. According to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the sale of tags, stamps, help a lot of state conservation efforts for wildlife. Also, sportsmen play, pay hundreds of millions of dollars in federal taxes that they spend on ammunition and hunting gear. That money, in turn, helps promote a lot of wildlife conservation efforts. It helps to rehabilitate and it also helps our environment. It helps with a lot of programs of hunted and non-hunted species. It also helps promote programs for threatened and endangered species. But yet, there's hundreds of millions of tons of lead being put into our environment, and it's being done legally. So how can hundreds of millions of people be putting, into our, putting lead into our environment legally and not even know it? It is with lead shot, lead sinkers, and lead jigs that sportsmen are using. So a lot of you ask, I'm not a sportsman. How does this affect me? This is where the whole action has a reaction comes into play. So the hunter sometimes misses its target altogether. So now there's lead in the environment. It's in our waterways. It's also in our soil. And it's also in our plants. Sometimes, when the hunter uses lead shot and they don't hit the animal in the right space for an instant kill, the animal gets away. Also, too, if the hunter is successful and dresses that deer out in the field, they're leaving the scraps for the scavengers. What they don't realize, that this is an easy meal for any scavenger or any wildlife. Now, wildlife can't taste it. All they know is they have a free meal. This was an easy meal. This image shows two pieces of lead shot. That amount will kill an adult bald eagle. Now, can you imagine what that would do to you? This image is of a dead coyote that was shot with lead shot. This is what they call a lead snowstorm. All that white that you see through that x-ray, that is lead shot. The image on the top is what it looks like when lead fragments 
after hitting its target. It fragments into millions of little pieces. The image below it is copper shot. When a hunter uses copper shot, steel, or bismuth, it stays intact. This next image is what waterfowl sees, our geese, our ducks. This is what they see. Do you see the lead shot? Do you see the jigs? When they are searching for food, this is what they're they're searching through. So you don't see the lead? Neither did they. The yellow circles indicate the lead jigs and leftover lead shot in water. So even though that we are thankful for the sportsmen, they still are responsible for putting hundreds of millions of tons of lead in our environment. Unlike most people, I'm very familiar with lead poisoning in wildlife. I see it every day and every week. My name is Tracy Young, and I am the wildlife rehabilitator and founder of Raven Ridge Wildlife Center in Washington Borough in Lancaster County. I hold permits through the Pennsylvania Game Commission, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, USDA, and Pennsylvania Fish and Boat. This enables me and my volunteers to rehabilitate injured, orphan, and abandoned wildlife. A few months ago, I received a call from one of my Pennsylvania game wardens. They had said that they had gotten a report of an bald eagle that was grounded. It couldn't walk. It was in poor condition. They weren't sure what was happening. They were on their way with this eagle. When the eagle came in, it was wet, it had mud all over it, it couldn't stand. I tested its blood, the first thing I did. The levels of lead in this eagle were so high, it wouldn't register on the machine. I knew right away that this eagle was suffering from lead poisoning. Now, either the eagle had eaten an animal that had eaten lead, or this eagle found an animal that had died from being shot by lead. I knew right away what I had to do, and that was get fluids on board and start chelation therapy. I was hoping that I got to this eagle in time. I was hoping that the treatment that I'm gonna do for this beautiful animal, I'm gonna save it. I took the wet bird, dried him off. We had warm towels ready for him. We set him up in a nice quiet cage. All night long, I thought, I hope this eagle makes it. I hope this eagle's alive when I come out in the morning. And it was. I was so happy. The chelation is working. I think we're gonna save this one started warming fluids, medication, 
getting ready to work on this eagle because I peeked in. He's still alive. Warming up fluids, I heard this crashing and thrashing. I dropped everything and ran to his cage. I must warn you that this video may be disturbing for some. When I went to his cage, this is what I saw. I grabbed the eagle and I held it in my arms. I kept saying, no, no, please, no. I'm going to save you. I'm going to get you back in the sky. The longer I held this eagle, I could feel its body relax. Its head was hanging. And then finally, this eagle took its last breath. This eagle died in my arms. I got to her too late. This beautiful symbol of our country, the bald eagle. This eagle was never going to reach full maturity and never have its full white head or white tail. This was something that could have been avoided When an animal comes in with lead poisoning, this is a long, painful, stressful, and expensive rehabilitation. But we try everything we can to save these animals. They don't know. Sportsmen are doing a wonderful job of keeping the balance with wildlife in our environment. For the record, I am pro-sportsman. I have spent many of summers growing up at my grandfather's hunting camp. It was there where I learned how to respect animals, how to respect the environment. That's why I became a wildlife rehabilitator. I wanted to make a difference. Sportsmen spend a lot of money for the top of the line gear, guns, tree stands, hunting trips. Why wouldn't you spend the money on high caliber ammunition? copper, steel, bismuth, it's out there. It is more expensive than lead. But what price, at what price can you put on our wildlife, our environment, even our plants? This lead is in our environment a lot of unexplained medical issues with people. It's lead poisoning. One person can make a difference. Even if you're not a sportsman, you probably know a sportsman. Please share with them what you taught, what were you were taught what you learned here today, and to make the right choice. It is your responsibility as a sportsman. You want to conserve the environment, conserve the wildlife. Make the right choice. 
remove the lead for our, from our environment. It's toxic for all of us. All of us can make a difference. Thank you.